So one of my goals this year was to put Pro Church Tools through a proper rebrand, design a new logo, and launch a fresh new version of ProChurchTools.com, our website. Now, the last time we did this was about five years ago. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that your church should be going through a rebrand every five years, and I'll get to why we did this in just a second, but I wanna show you the different iterations of the Pro Church Tools brand over the years. We'll start with V1. This is when uh, the company was just me. I barely knew my way around Photoshop, and here, all I'm really doing is just downloading different elements from the internet and then placing them next to one another. Fast forward a few years, we've got a couple of employees, but still no full-time designers on staff. We're mostly video folks at this point. So where do I go? Fiverr. And I get this gem of a logo made up for us where the P and the C for pro and church are in the same letter design. That's V2. From there, we continue to grow, and now we've got some designers on the team, some really, really talented people. And so we do a rebrand for real, really for the first time, where we actually put thought into our values and DNA and expressing that visually. And that's what gave us V3 of the brand. And this is what we've been using and enjoying for the past five plus years, which begs the question, why change it? And the simple answer is, we outgrew it. Not in the sense that the design became outdated, I think the design looks great, but five years ago is half the life of our company. I'm in my 30s now, I was in my 20s then. You know, both me and the company have grown up a lot and, and just changed. And so we wanted a brand that could better embody where we are right now and where we see ourselves going. Now, let's talk about some of the big challenges of this rebrand. First, we film our content in a number of different places. We have the podcast studio, which is light and bright. We have the YouTube studio that I'm in right now, it's dark and punchy, and so the brand needed to be able to work in both of those contexts. So my first thought was a black and white brand. You know, riding the wave of the light and dark mode designs that we're seeing with operating systems and apps seemed like functionally that would make sense. Uh, for example, one of the sites I had in my inspiration bucket for this was cal.com. They've got the dark and light mode thing going on, but it still has some personality and warmth to it. So we started the rebrand process, and here's what design comes up with in terms of exploring different directions. The first option had colors that I liked, but overall felt a bit too safe for me, which doesn't really match our company's personality or vision. The next one felt too corporate, you know, just overall a little bit soulless, I guess. The third direction was promising. I really liked the black and white kind of foundation. The grid elements stood out to me and I like the textures on the backgrounds. As for my biggest complaint with this design direction, well, I'll just show you what I told design directly. My biggest complaints with this, uh, I have a personal vendetta against Babis, and I cannot use this font. <laughs> so font issues aside, we had our direction, but the more we got into it, the less I was feeling it. And, and surely you know this creativity gut check where you're in a project, the work is looking good, and you can't quite put your finger on what it is, but something's just not clicking. So I was getting a bit anxious, uh, because the more that we go down this path, the more likely it becomes that this is what we're sticking with. And then, one day, I'm on my morning walk, and it hits me. And so I whip up my phone, and I send an email to design that reads, quote, I had a breakthrough today, which is a term that I don't use lightly. I was on my daily morning walk and it just hit me. Like I saw it in my mind's eye. The, this time last week, I was staring at all those pastel colors and something just wasn't clicking and it's because deep in my subconscious, I'm convinced I had an idea of what I wanted but I just couldn't think of its source until today. It's old school VHS tape branding, like Polaroid. I've attached a ton of different examples. At last, we had our heading, those blank VHS tapes that we used to buy so that we could record shows and movies directly from the TV. You know, not only was this design just gorgeous, but thematically it made sense as well because it was perfectly representative of my generation, millennials. You know, we grew up in an analog world and then digital hit us in the face in adolescence. Like my most treasured blank VHS tape was my recording of Vince Carter's slam dunk competition from 2000. I must have watched that thing 300 times as a kid. And sure, VHS tapes are a relic from the past now, but look at this design, man. It still goes hard. So we change direction slightly, design starts augmenting the work and we land on something really special. Now, before they show it to me, they make sure to add this little disclaimer. No more walks, please. <laughs> All right. Understood. Now, before I show you the logo, fonts, and colors we landed on and how the new designs all look, we need to talk about the biggest problem that still needed solving. I've avoided mentioning it until now, and that is 
Our company's awful, awful name, Pro Church Tools. I've been honest about this for many years. The name came from an email from an old friend on a whim. He was like, oh, you should start a blog. Call it Pro Church Tools or something, I don't know. 15 years later, the company name remains. Now, why is this name so bad? Well, it doesn't really mean anything. You know, it's just three words put together. And because it's three words, it often gets stylized incorrectly which tends to aggravate me. Pro church tools, all one word, or pro church, one word plus tools. No, no, it's, it's pro church tools, three words, each word capitalized. It's also really long, right? So when we're designing a logo, that makes things tough. Plus you can't shorten it because you, you know, which word do you choose? Pro, tools, church, it's all bad. Not to mention, we always have to add with Brady Shearer at the end of it because it's also a personal brand in many ways. And the name is so useless on its own that it needs an addendum, which if you ask me is the ultimate indictment of this clown name. Anyway, this was our old logo. A little arrow coming out of a bracket meant to symbolize, you know, us entering and seizing the biggest communication shift in 500 years. My request to design for the new logo, ditch any kind of symbol altogether. Instead, let's just have the logo be a word mark. You know, it's already long enough as it is, this is one way to shorten it. So this is our new logo. You can stack it up to get it closer to a square shape. That's the primary lockup, or you can elongate it. That's the secondary lockup. We also came up with these really cool badges that are very retro. The 167 reference is of course to seizing the 167 hours beyond your Sunday service each week. And then we've got some stickers as well. This one's my favorite, a pair of interlocking rings with Pro Church Tools and Brady Shearer in there. For colors, we settled on black and white, true to the original direction of the rebrand, but also a cream color to imbue that retro VHS blank tape vibe. And then there's a red, gold, and blue as the secondary colors. For typography, we kicked Babis to the curb and instead went with New Haas Grotesque as our primary font with Key Monospace as the secondary. And this font pairing, you know, for me, Key is giving old VCR camcorder on screen display font, and then New Haas Grotesque is modern. Swiss, clean design at its best. And so we've got this modern and retro pairing, which is really the life force of this new brand. I mean, and, and come on, if you're loving this font pairing as much as me, hit the thumbs up button on this video. Will you? Come on, really does make a difference. Let's look at the website now. On the homepage, we've got this ribbon of the three secondary colors, the badges and stickers make an appearance, and we've still got the grid from that initial stylescape. Plus, dark sections paired with light sections inspired by cal.com, the Pro Church Tools show, our podcast got new artwork, but the big test for me was gonna be social media. How do we take this brand and create two unique kinds of YouTube thumbnails? Light version for the podcast, dark version for the main channel here. And I have to say, I have been very pleased with the early returns. The carousels on Instagram have also looked great with the new brand and the new fonts and the new colors. All in all, I couldn't be happier. You'll be seeing this brand in a ton of new ways in 2024, so we're really excited for that. And I wanted to show you kind of the whole process uh, in this video, because not all creative projects are smooth, but if you stick to it and have an understanding team to work with, you can always course correct and come out with something that you are proud of. To that end, I've got to shout out the design team that worked with me on this. Uh, and this is interesting because while we do have a team of 20 plus creatives at our company, including designers and web developers, for the first time in a long time, we didn't use them for this internal project. And that's because we need them to stay focused right now on building Nucleus, our church website software. So I was looking elsewhere for this rebrand. And so the team that we used for this was our friends over at Church Media Squad. Steven did the work on the branding, Ashley did the work on the web design and dev, Ivy's been doing a ton of the design work for us for Instagram and YouTube. And earlier this summer, we started using the squad for a few extra social media designs. And they were so good with that, that we had them do some video editing for us, and then some copywriting, and then some more design work uh, to the point where when we were ready for a rebrand and I saw that they had just released a new branding service, it felt like the perfect match at the perfect time. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. I don't get any discount with Church Media Squad or anything like that for mentioning them, but I did want to shout them out because they've been such great partners allowing us to focus our internal resources on the products that we're building. So shouts to them. I'd love to hear your thoughts though. What do you think of the new brand, the new logo, the new website, the new fonts? Feel free to add your voice in the comments and thanks as always for your time, attention, and trust. We'll talk soon.